Hey guys, how you doing? Today I really wanted to show you what uh, what a real AV kind of professional would have in their own house. I know that a lot of people probably wonder. They probably, you know, see people, they meet people in stores, they meet salespeople in showrooms, that kind of thing. And they probably wonder, um, you know, what, is the, what do these people really have in their house? Um, and that probably changes depending on if they own the company, obviously, and some other things. But, um, but I do own this company, so today I'm going to show you what's here in my home. First, I want to start kind of with the story though, and I really want to kind of take you on a journey because this is a this is going to be a dual video. Um, part of the video is going to talk about 235 versus 16 by 9, and what I mean by that is the long, the long skinny, um, no bar situation that people go through, and there's a lot of questions on the internet. Um, I see a lot of chatter on which one to get, which one to get and things like that, and I have a very, very strong opinion on this. When I started this room, because of the way that the riser is that my videographer is standing on with the chairs above it and now you, or below it and now you see beanbags here, um, I had to get a 235 screen. So my screen started about here and went almost to the ceiling. I had, uh, at first I had a 172, it was wall to wall, acoustically transparent. I hated, um, I hated it. I didn't like the video quality because it was white. I didn't like, um, the audio was fine. I had Klipsch THX speakers back there. Um, you know, it was a, it was a nice room and I really wanted a big, big screen. Uh, then I changed it out for a 162 black diamond. Um, if I have photos of these, I'll have them cut them in real quick so you can kind of see some of this stuff. Um, but that black diamond was amazing. What wasn't amazing though is it, and this is where my opinion comes in on whether you should get 16 by nine or 235. And since we're looking at a 16 by nine, I think you're going to see where we end up here, but um, the bottom line is 235 used to be cool. What I mean by that is movies were either shot in 16 by 9 and that was fine. There was these bars on the sides and stuff, or they were shot in 235 and that was really awesome. You, you could either use a lens, which, you know, we could dive, that, dive into that in a whole video if you want, um, or you can use the zoom feature. And the zoom feature, of course, pushes the black bars on the top and bottom. But because projectors, you see this in my other video, um, because projectors put what's called a dim white light to the dark area, which would be the black bars, you still saw it. It still illuminated the wall, illuminated my ceiling. Um, and quite frankly, movies are just not in 235 anymore. I mean, there is quite literally uh, a, a Transformers movie that switches aspect ratios from four or five different aspect ratios every single cutscene. So if you put it on fast forward, it literally goes like this. I mean, that's not an enjoyable way to watch a movie. And, and if you have a 235 screen, you have to actually put it in 16 by nine mode. And then you're going for, from a square in the middle of your screen to just a mess of different aspect ratios that either fill or don't fill. And you know, it's it just not enjoyable. And when I sell it to a customer, I know I'm gonna get these questions. I know they're gonna be like, why are there bars here? Why are there bars there? And, and no matter how many times I say it, the people that go on the internet and want this 235 experience, um, you know, they, they end up kind of calling me and bother and, and kind of like being, being bothered by a lot of things that it does or doesn't do. Um, so I'm a big 16 by nine guy. I'm like, look, get the projector as far back as you can build it into the wall. So we built that into the wall. I had a closet there. Look, if it's an outside wall or something like that, you can't do that. But you know, we're, we're pretty custom. So if I need to build that thing into the wall, we push it into the wall, get the distance, get the bigger screen and just leave it alone. Um, because now my picture just does what it does and, it, and it's totally fine. So bring, bring you to the last part of my journey. Um, I got COVID in, uh, at Thanksgiving. My family was super excited about it, obviously. And as I sat in here being catered to by my wife for, for three or four days, um, I had nothing but to do, but turn into an enthusiast and start kind of being bothered by everything my theater doesn't do or does do well, just like my customers. And um, it was funny to sit here as a, at, you know, kind of as a client, but I was living in the room, but I was still bothered by a lot of the things. Now I had at the time Focal Sopra, floor standing speakers, some of the best speakers in the world in my opinion, um, Focal Sopra center channel, and two REL carbon subs, which are phenomenal. Um, I've changed them out to what would be my favorite sub in the world um, right now. And I'll probably end with a little bit about them uh, just because we won't be coming back to my room ever probably, but. Um, you know, what I decided was, hey, I've got to go 16 by 9, right? And as I sat in my chair and I look across here, I'm like, that means, you know, when I started measuring, you know, I snuck down, got a measuring tape when my family was away. 
and I started measuring, I started drawing, and I realized the biggest image I could get on this wall was a 153 in a 16 by nine screen, so that's what this is, and that left me with literally no room on the sides. The subs touch almost on the walls, but it obviously fits, um, and I had to go acoustically transparent. Now, I, I'm gonna break every rule that I did in all the videos I did before, right? I did a whole video on whether AT versus regular, and I said that regular screens are better than AT, and quite frankly, they, they are. Um, this screen has holes in it. The version that doesn't have holes in it is better. Um, but just like my clients, you are going to have give and take. You're going to give up something to gain something. I had to give up my floor standing speakers to gain a larger screen. And going larger screen, I had to put the speakers in the wall. Now, because I'm who I am and I'm insanely picky and I would probably cry myself to sleep if I gave up my Folk House Sopras, you know, that are $26,000 or whatever they are a pair. And, and all of a sudden my sound now sucked, right? So I couldn't do that. So um, I love Focal and I put Focal Utopias um, behind here, each with their own individual subwoofer. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut to some elevator music while he shows those pictures out. So now that we're back from what, what is hopefully some amazing music that he chose, uh, we're gonna talk about what's finally back there now. So now I've got three Focal Utopias across the center. I've got a, a triple six inch sub attached to each speaker at each location. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, at one point when I put in these uh, JL Audio Fathom 113s, which in my opinion are the best subwoofers on the planet, um, at one point they were uh, they were off. One of the settings in the, in the receiver made them turn off. And so I was watching a movie, I think it was Top Gun, and I was like, man, it really sounds good. And after about five minutes, I was like, I feel like it should be a little more bass. Those weird are my subs on. And I literally ran over here and my subs were off. And that's saying a lot because those subs are the most violent, beautiful thing on the planet in the world of bass. Um, and they were not on. And so what I was hearing was only an in-wall triple six inch. Now there's three of them. So um, I have them cut off to 40 hertz so they don't, ever try to do something they're really not supposed to do. Um, but they were giving me room filling, punchy, fun, exciting bass from an in-wall sub, which I'll probably never say again, no matter how many reviews I do. Um, but those in-wall subs are badass. And that's just, that's just that. When I turned the subs back on, I was like, oh, good God, that was missing. But just the fact that I kind of didn't know right away should say a lot about the speakers that are behind that screen. Um, Here's the caveat. The speakers behind the screen are 30 grand. So, you know, that's my, that kind of my point, right? So I say this all the time about in walls versus floor standing and this and that. It's like, look, if you want your in walls to sound like your floor standing speakers, you got to throw a lot of money at it. Um, just like if you want musical bass that also is insanely violent, um, we actually call it violent musicality in our showroom. Um, it's just those, but they're $6,000 each. Um, so, I mean, you're looking at $60,000 almost on my front wall alone. So yeah, it's amazing. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you have to go so far to equal what you had in a floor stander, um, dollar wise to kind of, to kind of, to kind of get there. Um, there's a couple other companies that I would put behind a screen and, and not look back. Uh, you know, you got Kef reference, obviously, um, you know, the, the KEF 300, or 3000 series stuff is amazing. Uh, they make a small and a large and they're far less money than these. Um, but those are really the only things that I would put, you know, back here personally. Um, but again, if you really wanted to know what, you know, kind of what a, a home theater guy would do if he could do it financially and, and he wanted the kind of the best of all the worlds um, at the same time, this is it. So what we have in here is a screen innovation slate Acoustically transparent 153 zero edge. We've got dual JL audio Fathom 113. So it's a 13 inch uh, 13 and a half actually driver I mean a, just an absolute monster amplifier um, They weigh so much. I don't know that I could pick it up myself um, We had to roll them up the stairs in the boxes just because they're so insanely heavy and uh, we've, this room is full uh, 11 channel, so it's 7.2.4. Uh, 7 
my rears, and you know, this is just one of those things, the, the ba actual back rears that are near the projector, they're not where I would want them. Um, at the end of the day, it's where they had to go because this center portion was gonna be all stars. So I put them there. I might actually move them forward a little bit later. Um, they probably should live about, uh, about 18 inches from this fur down here, and then I'll put them behind the stars. Um, they're too close to my rears. Every room is not perfect, and, and even, even me, um, you know, I built the home uh, custom and everything, but even I had to make some concessions, and that's why I don't feel bad telling clients they have to make some concessions. You know, we get all these people, and they're like, I want this perfect theater, and it's like, well, your room's not perfect, so let's, let's talk about that, you know? My riser that he's standing on is actually pushed, you know, four feet over. Um, now, my center chair is my right chair in the back, which is fine. That's my money chair. Um, I've got it pulled off the wall a little bit and I've fully calibrated the room with uh, using my Anthem Arc um, preamplifier and then I went and overlaid it with my own settings because I don't believe everything they do is correct. And uh, I, I don't believe anything any microphone system does is correct by the way, so that's neither here nor there. I will always change it for my customers because I'm more ear and hey does this sound good and is that movie awesome and did that sound good or not. And, and if and if the microphone says yes, but my ear says no, and the client's ear says no, we erase it and we go, we go back to, we just go back to manual. Um, but this is a, a, a badass fun room. Um, another thing that we do at Theater Advice, and this is super, super important um, to know, is we mix and match our rears and our fronts. And I know that that is gonna get me some bad comments. Um, I don't really care. Because at the end of the day, I've been doing this now for you know, almost 25 years. And I listen to my clients and I pay attention to what they say. And what they say is, I never hear my dialogue and I never hear my rears. Um, you know, those are the things that they say if the room is, is set up not the way that we would love or, you know, something like that. End of the day, I'm not cutting these speakers out of the wall anyway. They're Klipsch THX speakers. They're giant. The holes would be a pain in the ass to fill. It, the whole room is foamed. Um, so I just leave them there. Uh, we do things like Klipsch and Kef and Focal as rears all the time, even when the fronts don't match it, um, because they're louder, and, and Klipsch is kind of the, the forefront of loud. Um, you're almost never listening to music in the rear. Sometimes some movies will throw some score there. If you're listening to Dolby Atmos music, sure. Um, you know, old DVD audio video, uh, DVD audios and stuff like that will do surround sound music. But for the most part, the hierarchy of movie, of course, is score comes out of the front too, voices from your center, and effects are your rear. So glass breaking, screaming children, um, you know, some a car crash behind you, gunshots, that kind of thing. Klipsch does that better than anyone else. So, you know, I'm not a big believer that your rears have to match your fronts. Your front three have to match for sure, mine do. Um, I've changed my front three out six times since I've lived here, and now I've got too much money and too big of holes behind the screen to ever do that again, so I won't. But um, this is my end all be all room. And uh, I now sit in here and I don't wonder if I should do something else. I've got my 16 by nine. Um, now my video games are large and in charge. My movies are you know, what they should be um, and things like that. I'm actually gonna start this uh, dragon movie that I have queued up, excuse me, because I kind of want to bounce back to that 235 thing real quick. So obviously this is the menu of Apple TV. Um, it's in full 16 by 9 just like some movies are, and that's the that's the, the killer, right? Some movies are still in this, and some movies that are being made right now are still in 16 by 9 because they're making them for IMAX and things like that. And if they are IMAX, they're going to change during the movie like Top Gun does. So as we dive into this, what used to happen at my old, at my old, uh, my old system is that I could take this and I could zoom it all the way out. It was only a little bit larger anyway. But then the black bars were on the, on the walls and things like that. Um, what ended up happening when you watched any movie that changed formats, which is a lot of movies, any IMAX movies, that kind of thing. I'd be watching the movie, it zoomed out, didn't know it was IMAX. And all of a sudden, the picture's on the ceiling and on the wall. And I'm like, okay, this is an IMAX movie. So then I have to hit the memory button, hit memory number one button on my projector zoom back down and then I'm watching a tiny version of this long skinny rectangle in this big long skinny rectangle screen and there's bars on the side and the front and I'm watching and it just looks like I don't even know what I'm doing. I mean if any client walked in there that just didn't know and I didn't feel like explaining it to him they would be like why did he buy that big screen he's watching it in a tiny square in the middle so you know I just I saw too much of that and it bothered me and I, and as Netflix came out I mean Netflix's new deal is they put an inch on the bottom and top of your 60 by 9 screen or TV. 
So what do you do there? Have 52 different memories in your projector? It's a hot mess. Just get a 16 by nine screen. So I just kind of wanted to illustrate that. Now my, my, my 235 is big, man. My 235 is still large. Um, I've got a nice big image here. I didn't have to sacrifice too much. Um, I've got uh, some buttons over here, 4K Apple TV, 4K DVD. I still have an Oppo, which is amazing. I've got a PlayStation button, my sconces, my theater off. Um, I can control the whole room. Right when I walk in, whatever I'm coming in here for, I can hit 4K Apple, sit down as the room's kind of turning on, get my popcorn, you know, get my kids all in here and things like that. Um, but I mean, the screen looks great. We'll do a couple cut shots of, uh, you know, of some of the stuff. I'll, you know, queue up a video game so you can see what that looks like on the large screen. Uh, the slate material, you can't see the holes from here. It is absolutely just phenomenal screen material. Still has great black levels. Even the bars look pretty good. I don't know how it's coming off on the camera, but I promise in real life, it's, it's very, very, very good. Color accuracy is amazing. Um, you know, it's just a phenomenal screen made by one of the best AV companies in the world. So um, shout out to uh, Ryan and his team for coming up with stuff like this because it really did give me both things, right? I had AT before, it was white, I hated it, just like I talked about in my other video. Um, so I thought to myself, I've got to get, you know, getting rid of my black diamond sucked, I'm not going to lie. That thing is just the most amazing screen in the world, but they don't make it in AT. They, they, they don't make it with holes in it because it's too thick. So, you know, I had to give up a little, just like I talked about, as my clients do. I had to give up a tiny bit of contrast um, to kind of go with the slate, but it really is the best of both worlds. I can absolutely game in here with, uh, with the lights on and things like that. Um, it doesn't look like this, but it doesn't look horrible either. Um, I often do not use this room in the, in the full dark um, and don't need to with the slate. So if you have any questions, please like and subscribe. I really do want you guys to... Uh, Give me ideas of other videos. I've probably got a list of 50 or 60 things I'll be covering throughout the year. But, you know, if I see something that I'm like, hey, that guy has a good point. I should talk about that. I will, uh, I'll gladly do it. And hopefully we can cut in some, uh, some cool demos at the end of this video. Thanks. Hey, so I just turned this on to do a couple, a uh, couple B reel so he can, he can add and cut in some, some actual like movie footage and stuff in the room. And I put on Avatar. Uh, thinking that it was 16 by 9 and I just wanted him to zoom in on the top. This is exactly what I was talking about This is one of those new Netflix type things and I don't remember if this movie's IMAX or not if it pops in and out This could be one of many, but this is a perfect example of why not to buy a 16 by 9 screen I mean you've got a two inch two inch bar on the top and bottom of this one for absolutely no reason They could have just shot in 16 by 9 and filled up your TV at home um, but instead they came up with this wacky no reason aspect ratio and it's really odd that they do stuff like that but they do it and more people are I mean, this is a brand new movie uh, by one of the top directors on the planet and he's doing it so you know that's kind of my point so i would stay away from 235 um i know people that make lenses are going to be sad about that and things like that and look the lens i'll touch on it real quick Th there's a way to make this cool you know if you have a four thousand dollar lens on there you can turn your projector from 60 by 9 to 4 by 3 and stretch it out optically it's not perfect because it is an optical stretch um, but it does get rid of the bars on the top and bottom and things like that, but you're still never going to fix this You know these weird ones that they throw in there are still they're still always going to throw you for, for a loop So I mean if you want your your hobby to really become part of a part of your job and mess with it all the time Get a 235 screen, but it's just not what it used to be. So now we'll cut in some videos. <laughs> Thanks A young bull who went rogue He's outcast alone and he has a missing fin. They say he is a killer. No. Miracle number two. Now they're in Coffin Corner. We're not out of this yet. Here it comes. Smoke in the air, smoke in the air. Talk to me, Bob. Break away, Phoenix, break away. Not a claw, not a claw. By presence, others just milled about. But the whole town felt...